Yo. I'm cutting, cutting the intro short again. <sighs> okay. Hold on. Oh. Intro getting cut short since I'm late. I didn't mean to be late, but I, I didn't see anyone in chat, so I figured no one would notice. Let me... Uh... No, I'm good. How are y'all doing? I'm doing all right. Thank you. Got my coffee. No, it is not microwaved. Actually, here, hold on a second. Oh, that still opens up edge? God damn it. Oh, that's still poggers. Okay, never mind. I guess I got rid of the coffee emoji. <clears throat> we got a we got a spooky spooky overlay going on. I can I can get rid of that for now if you want. Easy enough to do. Hey cat, can you not walk on my keyboards, please? Come here. Come here. You wanna you wanna say hello to chat? Why? Why? He's not, he's not feeling very talkative right now. Uh, I was literally waiting for like five minutes, Bimple. You didn't pre-announce the stream, so we couldn't do our pre-stream. But I did! What do you mean? You mean like on Twitter? Where, but I, I did though. I started the stream half an hour early, though. Or at least I, 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 I uh, did the pre-stream, I thought. Um, so... Uh, overlay is cool, leave it on? Okay. I don't know if it's too distracting or something. So, um, y'all might remember that I, I messed up pretty badly last time and, uh, burned a bunch of books that I needed. So, that's what we're doing today is we're getting some books back. Uh, quite a lot of books, actually. So... I can't I don't actually know how how far back I have to go J book of Jack hold on a second I think I can start here book of Tain okay we, we're starting here um, unfortunately, I didn't grind on my off time because I, I'm, I'm very lazy like that. I'm sorry. Um, but I did install the mod, so I'm not completely lazy and, and uh, hopeless. So it should be now that whenever I... And I'm just going to, like, smooth brain this. I don't... I don't you know, we're just going to hang out and chat while I do these battles again. It shouldn't actually take all that long considering how overpowered I am for these. Um, but we're just gonna hang out and chat while I, I do these combats again. When I went to your YouTube cha page, there was no thumbnail box announcement for the stream. Okay, that's weird. I, I, I did legitimately do it. I set it up before I went and got my coffee. Um, it was set... It w admittedly, it was a little bit late. I, I, I put the pre-stream up at 11.30. I don't know how late is too late, but is half an hour notice enough? You scheduled it like 12 minutes in advance. Oh, weird. Huh. Okay. Is a day, a, a day's like, uh, extra time good? Like, when, when do y'all, when, when you would, when would you all say that you check? Is, is really the question. When do y'all think that you check? Is it the day of stream, or would you say that you check, um, like, you know, an hour before, or do you check the previous day? No point in checking the previous day, I figure. Oh, cat! There is a cat here, you want to hear him? There you go. I don't know if you can hear him. I don't know if the purring picked up. Uh, 
He's hanging out on my lap for now, as long as I keep giving him pets. As soon as I stop giving him pets, then then the show is over and he he leaves. So we're good now. The 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 the, the pet monster is being sated. Maybe it was just my YouTube freaking out because I opened the big simple page an hour before the stream starts to get in on the pre-stream chat. I didn't see anything until like five. Hours. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll I'll try and get the um, pre-stream going like a day in advance, and then it's there if you want to join it. I usually watch some tutorial in the morning, so 16 hours in advance would remind me it's stream day. Okay, all right, good to know. I know I should do it, like, you know, probably give it at least 12 hours advance notice. Um, but I, I, I kind of forget, and I also like to, you know, I, I don't know if you all notice, but I kind of take my weekends off. <laughs> um, you know, running the YouTube channel is, is a 24-hour, uh, I wouldn't say thankless, but semi-thankless job. And uh, burnout happens, and, and so I take my weekends off. And so what happens is um, the day of stream, and of course, you know, Monday was uh, Canadian Thanksgiving. I, does it, is, is American Thanksgiving in November? Either way, anyway, it was, it was Canadian Thanksgiving, I think. And uh, so I took, I took the day off. I've, I've been playing uh, Mad Max. On my on my Steam Deck, I'm sorry if I whenever I bring up my Steam Deck it sounds like boasting, but uh, the reason I'm even specifying is because uh, really it's just context of how how cozy that is. So let me let me set the scene for you, okay? Um, you know I get a beverage, probably a tea, not not like a not like an illicit beverage. You know? I don't I don't I don't really do that, not too often anyway. Um, and I have a yogi bow, and uh, I, I've, I'm frustrated with my my insistence in, in maintaining brand, the brand name. Um, but basically, all it means is a very long bean bag. Imagine a very long bean bag chair, okay? Um, and so I'm lying down on the bean bag chair in front of my TV. It's a nice TV, and. Uh, I then search for games that I think would be cozy for playing on my TV slash stream deck, which is now uh, I have a dock so I can play my stream my Steam Deck on my TV, and it works really well. I I, I have a lot of like I, I guess I'm going to talk about this um, despite what what chat is um, hyper fixating on, <laughs> but uh, like. I do kind of want to talk about this. I kind of want to do a couple hot take videos, <clears throat> but I guess it uh, if I if I talk about it on stream, it's it's almost as good as doing a hot take video. I, I resist the temptation to do like you know what grind my gear what grinds my gears hot take videos because I don't really want to turn the channel into some kind of snark fest. And but I do have some hot takes, so bear with me here. Um, Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much, Mimesis. Also, thank you for your comment on the on the jelly car. I don't reply to everything every any, anymore, but I do read everything, and I really appreciate it when people uh, send me very uh, positive comments on my videos. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, but so uh, I've talked a little bit about this on on Twitter, which really does it does sound like oh. Yet another rant on, or thread on Twitter, but um, the 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 kind of culture of roguelites. Now I'm not I'm not going to talk about meta progression because I don't care anymore. It's here to stay and whatever. Um, I'll I'll try and find games that I like that don't make use of the meta progression I don't like. But let me talk about something else. You know what I am a little bit fed up with, just a little bit are games that take 200 hours to beat. Um, I, this, you know, it started with Isaac, and I think everyone was realized how hungry they were for games with a lot of replayability. 
and certainly I enjoy a game with replayability, but I also am I'm kinda getting over the idea of games that takes that take like a ridiculous number of playthroughs to, to actually complete. Hey Dimethorn. Is Thanksgiving something you congratulate people on? I don't know. I don't think so. I, no? <laughs> you can wish someone happy Thanksgiving. That that works. Um, I think, I, okay, we're, we're doing this one. Mimple throwing shade at Library of Ruina. No, 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 no. See, Library of Ruina is actually not what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not talking about a game that has a, a lot of content. Um, I'm talking about a game that requires beating like 500 times in order to fully complete. Like, you know, it's a very specific kind of game. Um, you know, like, I, I've been playing Hades, and Hades is on, actually on the, 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 the good side of what I'm talking about. It, like, I, I understand it t it's going to take a few, quite a few times playing, playing through it to actually get to the end. I understand that, but the thing I do like and appreciate about Hades is that they make every effort to keep the game fresh. You know, like, I, it's not just replayability, there's actually, like, progression in the plot and storyline and characters. So in that sense, it actually feels like one continuous playthrough. Um, so I actually do understand the forgiveness for a lot of the, um, you know, to put it bluntly, frustrating meta progression in Hades. Because it is the same meta progression, but I don't mind because... Um, they do actually, it, it feels like one continuous playthrough. You're meant to die over and over again, and that's actually part of the storyline. So, okay, fair game, right? I'm talking about games like, like Vampire Survivor. Um, I'm talking about games like, uh, Binding of Isaac. I'm talking about games like, um, I don't know, Monster Train or Slay the Spire <clears throat> that have... A tendency to require the player to play through a ridiculous number of times without really changing all that much and relying fully on RNG to you know make to, to make that replayability thing happen and and basically require the player to like beat the game in very specific ways in order to get their their hours hey Kevbo Rotato? Okay, I mean, Brotato, yeah, fair point. Brotato is actually in the uh, the group of what I'm talking about. Is like, Brotato doesn't really change all that much. They have added, um, you know, enough to keep it interesting. I, I do appreciate that there's like more than one kind of boss. Um, but yeah, Brotato is kind of the kind of game I'm talking about. Now, Brotato is very good, so I'm not going to throw shade at Brotato. But you know what game I am going to throw shade at? Uh try and remember that it's got the most generic name of all time you see here. rogue rogue genesea all right i've been playing a game called rogue genesea um now i love potato i love potato too no no hard feelings on potato but like, here, there's there's a there's a few hot takes here, you know. Like, <clears throat> there's a few hot takes. It's not just games that, like, they just feel like, um, you know, like I'm never gonna actually finish them. Like, they just feel like commitments, you know. Like, if they were exactly the same game every time, and they just relied on replayability, that that would be fine. But that's generally not the case. Generally, a lot of these games want you to beat them like 500 times and they all have like 500 little tiny prizes and unlocks and achievements and stuff that, that make it feel like it's it's incomplete until basically you you have done literally everything. And it just feels, I don't know, empty, you know, like it feels empty. Like, I kind of, I'm, I, I get, right now, I've been really wanting more games that have some kind of beginning and ending, you know? Like, they, they have 
a conclusion, a happy ending, and that's what you're working towards, and you're not just working towards 100% completion, because the 100% completion doesn't really do it for me anymore. And it just feels like a really empty and exhausting commitment. You know what I mean? I like playing chess against Stockfish AI. I always lose, but the game is fun and I enjoy it. Right. So I get like, it's a very specific thing I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like, oh, chess. Uh, not Sorry, not to completely demean your contribution there. That's I'm not talking about like a game that you can get a lot of hours out of. I'm talking about a game that demands a lot of hours in order to just be complete without really providing much um, continuity, without providing much uh, invest, like emotional investment from, you know, towards the player, not from the player, but towards the player, you know? So like the reason Library of Rowena isn't really what I'm talking about is because it's a linear style game with a lot of content and a story and it makes it worth your while. It's got something interesting going on that um, kind of, you know, contributes to the emotional investment of it, right? Like, I want to know what happens. I know I want to know uh, how the story progresses. Um, you know, things are going to change up a bit. Yeah, there's a bit of grinding, but I just installed a mod that gets rid of that, so that's fine. I'm not going to, you know, that's fine kind of Android games where you must play at least three times each level in order to progress enough to advance. Uh, my man Kevbo, love potato. Minecraft? Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Um, that's a different, almost a different conversation, but I think it is related. I'll talk about Minecraft in a second. Now that I can agree with more games in, in less play time, but make a game like that is expensive. Oh, I understand that. I understand, you know, I guess what I'm saying <clears throat> is, I don't know what I'm saying. There's like three or four hot takes in this pile here. This is the problem because it can't really adequately explain what it is, but it is a combination of exhaustion for games that demand um, a ridiculous amount of playtime from the player without actually... Um, offering much in terms of of uh, investment, like like games like Vampire Survivor. I don't want to say directly Vampire Survivor because Vampire Survivor does not deserve my ire because it really was um, the first in in a, in a way of these. You know things like like Binding of Isaac, but even Binding of Isaac offers something, some kind of emotional um, connection and investment. Like when I beat the game. I get something that contributes to a big picture. You know what I mean? Like I, I get uh, an, another chunk of storyline and I don't just get, hey, you did it with, you know, you completed the game with the, the, the ranger and you get the ranger completion achievement. You've also unlocked one new item to that, you know, in, in the pool of the game and now it'll be available on your f future playthroughs and I'm like, cool. Like, you know, I, I need I need more. What what am I doing here? What am I like? Am I just? I guess I I guess I'm just. Maybe I'm, I'm a little bit burnt out on completely mechanics driven games. You know. Maybe that's what it is. And I, you know that's that's coming from a it, it's a difficult thing for me because I am a very mechanics driven person. I like a lot. I love mechanics. I love crunchy mechanics. And I'm also one of these people that has for a long time, for most of my life said that if I had to cut out one part of a video game in favor of the other parts, it would probably be the story. I don't really care about story, but I still think that it is part of the pie. I think it's part of the, the picture and um, I, I guess having played a, a lot of games now that just kind of cut it out in favor of um, offering the player a, a toolbox of mechanics, I'm starting to miss it. Like a lot of these, and, and here's the second hot take. The vampire s survivor likes, the, you know, whatever we're agreeing on calling them, the um, arena survivors, stop it. I must hate Risk of Rain 2. 
Uh, I'll be honest, I, I have not played a lot of Risk of Rain 2, probably because I actually am not a huge fan. But I'm not a huge fan, not because it's a bad game, but because I'm not good at it and I was not willing to invest enough time to become good at it. And I think that's fair to say, it's a great game, love it, respect it, respect the devs, not my game. Because I, I just couldn't, I couldn't invest the time. I, I, I saw how much time it was going to take to actually complete that game, and I was like, nah, sorry. How did farming all those books you burned go, Bimple? Well, we're doing that right now. <laughs> so, you tell me. Actually, I should see if I'm actually getting, like, I should be getting infinity books, basically, from all of these. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be working as intended. Oh, no. Wait. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm supposed to be getting infinity books. What happens if I burn one book? That's not really what's supposed to happen. I'm, I have the mod on that's supposed to turn, basically make it so that I get infinity books and pages. So I don't have to do um, page, like, grinding. Uh, so to answer your question, how's it going? Eh, well, it's going okay, I guess. Well, I, I, I did just um, complete that. So let me see. I, I think I have everything I need now. I'll do Olga again. Um, greetings, twin. Hello, twin. Hot takes, yeah. Was it ever hard, though? Hold on. Um, one example of the opposite is Shigatari. You can finish the game in less than one hour. No need to play it again and again to unlock stuff, but it, it's an arcade game. Let me look that up. Shigatari. I'm assuming... Yeah, it is on Steam. Oh. Huh. How have I not seen this game before? Yeah, this looks cool. Wishlisted. Samurai RPG. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is Arena Survivor Likes. I've been playing Rogue Genesea, and when I say I have been playing it, I've, I've put a few hours into it. Let me see here. Almost two hours. That's not a lot of hours in the grand scheme of things. Um, it's felt like a lot, though. Um... It's, it's, it's just vampire survivors again, and I think what's really, like, kind of getting to me is, um, like, even the games that are very competently made, they're just, they're, they're, they're fine, they play fine, they, there's nothing ostensibly wrong about them or bad about them, but they really just are vampire survivors again in a, you know, new salad. You know, and um, I, you know, I appreciate a lot of the vampire sur or the arena survival games that I have played. Um, like you know, games like Potato, uh, they change enough about the format and include enough other mechanics to make them worth your while. Um, but I've also, even on stream, played a lot of arena survival likes that just are the same game again, and. Um, even though they are competently made, I feel like um, criticism is due. Um, like, what, what, what was the point? Why are, why are we doing? Why are we just like taking the format and changing nothing and then regurgitating it? And um, you know, like, even if it is completely competent and, and excellent, excellent, even, I'm not sure why I'm supposed to be grateful. Even if it is three dollars, I don't know. Like at a certain point, uh, three dollars—it's not about the price. It's not about the the money at all. It's about the time. Um, not just yours, or sorry, not just mine, but yours. Like how much time was spent in, invested in developing a game, and like you know, I, I do. I am a hardcore proprietor, or like um, opinion. I have I have the opinion that games are art, but so only so long as they express something. But if the only thing you're expressing is, "Hey, here's this game again," then it's not really art anymore, is it? It's just um, 
kind of a, it's a color palette. It's a palette swap, you know? It's not an asset dump, it's a palette swap. And, and I'm getting kind of tired of it a little bit. Bimple's getting fed up. <laughs> Bimple is getting fed up of exactly the same game over and over again. And I think Rogue Genesea is one of the worst offenders of this. And it is very competently done. It's, it's fine. But it is exactly the same game again, with this time with a level structure format instead of just a 30 minute arena pit. So really nothing has changed. And I, I don't I don't think it should leave unscathed. I think I think that you know it, it ought to be pointed out that though the game is very uh, competently made, um, it is exactly the same game again and and this has got to stop a little bit. You know what it reminds me of actually? I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna read chat for a second. It really reminds me of AAA games again. You know, like, you know how AAA games, the worst, one of the worst um, criticisms of it, uh, of tr AAA games in, in general, is that they uh, take a idea, a mechanic, a format, and they run it into the ground, right? First person shooters are the rage. First person shooters get driven directly into the ground. That dead horse is beaten so hard that it is a crater, right? And, and I think people got kind of tired of that. Um, open world games with towers that you climb every game every single game Ubisoft especially of course every single game they come out with towers that you climb you need to climb them G gotta climb that tower yo you gotta climb that tower though bro in order to progress the game and then people got really fed up and said that's an enough is enough I've climbed my last tower and I am done with climbing towers. And, um, you know, like, that's the, the, the thing you could definitely accuse AAA games in general is, like, when they know something works, when they know that there's something that players are not necessarily excited about but willing to tolerate, then they will take that mechanic and that format and they will absolutely beat it to death, resurrect it as a zombie, and beat it some more and until the players are just not willing to spend their money on it anymore um and i feel like that is being done in the indie community indie community with the vampire the arena survival like because it is uh, a format which is affordable for the indie uh dev to to execute if you can afford to um charge three dollars for a game then i have to imagine that the dev time was not not a lot. I think Brotato is actually an exception, and they have the balls, to, to put it bluntly, um, to charge 4 or $5 for it. This is Canadian also, I'm just realizing. So these games are probably like a dollar for a lot of people. Dungeon crawlers go burr. The game concept is kind of lost with some Android games where you watch more ads and pay more money. Oh yeah, um, I mean like, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that mobile games are trash for the most part. There's uh, exceptions, of course, uh, uh, of course there are, but like most of the top hit games on mobile are all um, hot garbage. Strongly disagree. Anything can be a game as long as it takes user input and has a win condition. Even knitting a scarf could be considered a game if your mom scores it afterwards. Uh, all right, hold on, I missed a lot here. Uh, not hard, hold on, was it ever hard though? Might as well call it a grindless, grindiness slider. Changing the subject a little, No Man's Sky updated to 4.0 now, it lets you change the difficulty mid-play, and with changing the difficulty I mean amount of enemies grinding fuel usage. Um, not hard, but some people don't like grinding, the point is it's not about, only about the grinding, but a lot of other options are there. Feels a lot more welcoming to new players. Um, I know most people, almost no people like you, I wish I played for the story. For me, to me, the story is the most important part. I, I yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm on the other end of that. Souls Games does it right for me. You can replay the same world with light game uh, weapons from the start to end with stronger and more challenging enemies. Yep, 
I, I can appreciate that. And the nice thing about New Game Plus in Souls games is I can very happily ignore it and it doesn't feel like I'm cheating myself, you know? Uh, I haven't opened Steam in months, so take what I say with a grain of salt. I like stories and games too. Make it interesting, the linear towards an end. Either straight path or complex one. Barely count games like Vampire Survivor and Potato as actual games, even if you discount. Oh, I mean, they're definitely games. I mean, if I'm willing to call a walking simulator a game, and I am, then, and then they're definitely games. There's, hold on, when Mim sees, I agree, games should be, for the most part, have a meaning and makes it worth the time. There's a big difference between an actual game, whether AAA or independent, and something like Vampire Survivor. No, they're games. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, I'm, I'm, this, I'm not gonna quibble over definitions. You know, I'm not gonna gatekeep what is and is not a game because I, I'm, I'm tired of a genre. In fact, I'm not even saying people, like, if you wanna make more vampire survivors or, or arena survival likes, go ahead. Um, but I, I think I'm gonna resist buying more of them. And I actually already have, I've already seen quite a few arena survival likes that have like, oh, this is the new one. This one, this one's really good and it does XYZ differently. And I'm like, I'm that, you know what? It's not enough. I need, I need some, uh, something else. I need m more. <clears throat> and it's like, I saw a re uh, Hades was on sale and I've never played it. I was really hesitant to and resistant to Hades because uh, I knew that it had meta progression up the up the wing wang and and i was not really excited for that but i saw it was on sale and i grabbed it and you know what it really is the story the characters the voice acting um the music the world that makes that game um worth playing where a lot of roguelites are are not in my opinion so Take all of that for what it's worth from Bimple, who is very vocal about his dislike for um, roguelites in general. Isn't there FIFA and PES? G mobile games are barely even games; they're just time wasters designed to get your money. Yeah, I mean that's a that's an entirely different conversation. I think that mobile games are very rarely made to be fun. I'll call them games, but that doesn't mean they have to be good games. They're, they're not good. Most of them are not good. I have been pretty vocal about my dislike for mobile games, but it really is a, a cold hatred um, that I have for a lot of mobile games. A lot of them are just idlers now. Um, a, some of them are have some gameplay, but really they're just idlers with extra steps. Um... And it's, it's really just a miserable affair. Soccer is a game. You are missing the point. If it have a body exercising, it's not a game. What? Aren't those sports? Are we really, are we really arguing about definitions again? I really don't care if, if you want to call it a game. I mean, heck, you know what? tell you what just just if you for for uh bimple's point of view on what is a game choose your own adventure books a game or not i'm just gonna go ahead and say it's a game and i'm the definition maker so that makes it objective now choose your own adventure books they're games you heard it here first you know what else is a game podcasts no okay no never mind <laughs> Do you see what happens when you open the door? I mean, I'm cl I'm trying desperately to close the door and just say whatever. It's a game. It doesn't. It really doesn't have to be a good game. You can call it a game. Just it's a bad game. Why not? You know. I care that you broke your elbow. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I don't care that you broke your elbow. <laughs> Deltora Quest is a game. It has quest in the in the name. It has to be a game. Someone out there, what about? Uh, I guess I was gonna say Lord of the Rings, but that doesn't have quest in it, does it? Mimple thinks give yourself goosebumps is a game. Why not? Call it a game. 
Choose your own adventure games or visual novels on. Hey, twin, twin swords. Hey, guess what? You just cracked the code right there. I know you think. I, maybe you thought that was a, a, an argument for why they're not games, but visual novels, game or not, visual novels are basically just like very in-depth choose-your-own-adventure books. And sometimes they're not even that. I played, I played almost two chapters of Higurashi, When They Cry. Zero player agency. None. No choices. Ever. You never make a choice. None. I can't stress that enough. Like, it sounds like I'm being hyperbolic. You never choose anything. Still a game. I don't know how, but I'm gonna, I'm just, it, it is. <laughs> so that, under that definition, uh, most books are now games. Give yourself goosebumps, isn't it game? It's serious freaking business. <laughs> It's called visual novel and not visual game. Well, visual novel is a genre of game, though. Hope that helped. Have a great day. Uh, Del Toro Quest is a game? I don't know. Visual novels are games. Kinetic ones aren't. What? Uh, but also, by the way, I'm not I'm not speaking at all to the quality of Higurashi. It is what it is. If you like it, you like it. It's fine. Oh, I just skipped the cutscene. I have to leave it now. Hold on. Shoot. Books don't have choices. Eh. I think. Um, like, my my general feeling about... I don't even like talking about definitions anymore, but, like, my general feeling about definitions is you cannot make a hard-lined definition for anything that won't eventually include something that doesn't feel like that thing. So you really got to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Like, you know, some visual novels have choices, so some would argue that those are games because you make choices. And you might say, well, no, because what about choose your own adventures? Well, okay, what about visual novel games that also have choices and also have inventory systems? What about visual novel games that have mini games within them, like the, the Danganronpa series? Those are, are those games yet? When did they become games? So this is like sliding bar gradient, like, you know, you like the, the freaking, um, uh, Moral Wind or, or Oblivion character ca uh, creation sliders, there's this thing and, and eventually the visual novel gets a, a big enough jawline that it becomes a Chad video game and and then you have to admit that it is a video game and then now what? Now what do you do? It is getting heated and crazy today. No, no, no. No heat, no heat here. Uh, sir sir and, and or madame. There's no, there's no heat here, only video games. <laughs> Big just made a hardline definition about hardline definitions. No, 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 I made, no. <laughs> I, I spoke absolutely about definitions. It's not the same as defining definitions. A definition can be defined as, you can't, can't do it. I know you, no. I spoke absolutely about definitions, but I, I don't think... Even definitions cannot be hard-line defined. By definition, kinetic novels are animated novels with backgrounds, dialogue boxes, and whatnot. Visual novels are kinetic novels, but... Alright. This conversation has officially become so niche that even I have no idea what is happening and cannot contribute. I guess we are being ironic. I don't know. Could you define this conversation as heated or ironic? Could one could say it is both. No, one it could be more one thing or another, but to define it as two two uh, wait, as one thing exclusively would that would be a mistake, I think. Now I define that all oh, listen. Now now you're just going to make it uh, needlessly spicy. Alright. I have to read the thing here. <clears throat> Taste of sweepers never cease to surprise. 
Always disgusting in new ways. Never realized there could be so many flavors of filth. Reminded, oh, by the way, content warning on this game if you're new in chat. And if you're new in chat, I apologize. Reminded of taste of fixer we ate. Was soft, was happy. Hard to eat, but tasty. Produced good silk, was satisfied. Must feed on sweepers for another week. Um, are these people who do you think that have like transferred their mind into a machine and then slowly replaced enough parts uh, like, you know, a.k.a. they're like the theseus of ships of people that they've actually lost their mind and are now just like mindless cyber zombies? Define irony. No. Because we must spin more silk. Index gave such prescript. What if mother of sweepers move before we finish? We hunt and feast. Must have must weave cloth. No? Wondered if we have plans when sweepers start retaliation. If they all seriously try to eat us, we must have limits. Sweepers are quiet quiet for now? Reasons unknown. Index has its gaze on us. We only make fabric as prescript pointed. No other prescript from index? None? No need for worry. Index is good friend. Hello, everyone. New characters. Greetings. Greetings. Messenger. Greetings. Yes, thanks for the greetings. I'm here to give you guys a new prescript. Head to library. Have other paper with you. There, this is no prescript. You're right, this is an invitation to the library. It's needed according to the prescript. We must go to library. We must eat sweepers and weave fabric. Can we eat messenger? Will be tasty, would produce good silk. No, I'm afraid not. You guys must obey the prescript, remember? You want to continue your silk making business, no? Um, if you don't follow your prescripts, the proxies will visit you. Love how these funny little guys speak. Good theory, Bimple. Prescript come first for us. If we break order, Prescript will not forgive. They could also be robots that have been like... Remember, um, making like artificial intelligence in this game too human is, uh, is illegal. So it could be that in order to loophole that, whole law arrangement is to make them un inhuman. That's actually an interesting idea. If making human uh, intelligence or human-like AI inter intelligence was illegal, then w a way you could navigate that would be to make a uh, in an, in uh, an intelligence so inhuman that it could no longer be classified as, as being human. And so therefore, what you do is you make them monsters. I does, but he's not here right now. I don't know what's going on in this game. Perhaps library have new ingredients to make new silk with. Since I'm done delivering the prescript, I'll be on my way. I'm sure you guys are already aware, but don't forget what happens if you fail to carry out any prescript. Sorry to interrupt, but we're here to retrieve our fabric. Hello there. It's the Kuro Kurokumo clan. A thumb subsidiary, right? Greetings, Kurokomo clan. We'll take the Nuovo fabric requested by the thumb. The payment is in that briefcase. By the way, I'm certain a, a finger bow bell is about to begin, and this is a rather frivolous behavior from the index. Hello, Zigel. So you create AM from I have no mouth and must scream, yes. I actually, I haven't played that game. I wouldn't mind uh, playing that game at some point. Have you played I Am Scre I, I Scream? Amazing little game. Love vanilla, to be honest. I haven't played that game. I, I wouldn't mind. I also want to play uh, maybe the remake of... Uh, what's it called? Let me, let me brain... Just fetching it from the archives. Um... No, it's gone. Uh, okay, help me out, guys. It's a immersive sim, one of the first immersive sims. Uh, there is an AI robot who wants to kill you. 
and you are in a spaceship and you are trying to escape said spaceship and there are zombies and they are evil what game help help bimple out um oh man it's like i i almost have it it's they have to look it up now. Hold on. Store tags, immersive sim. I I own it, but I don't have the remake. Yo, Salmulkra is a, an immersive sim? Since when? How come? What? It's not showing up in my list. Oh, System Shock. That's the one. You got it. System Shock. Yeah. I want to play uh, the remake when it comes out. What should we do, Dame? He must be a simple messenger. A big simple messenger, but he's still an executive member of the Index. It will be difficult to take him on by our own. It is a valuable opportunity nonetheless. Especially since the messenger is alone right now. Sure. All I do is deliver words from above. The Index is the same as always. Now then, why don't we go our own ways if we're done with all business here? Hey, question. Uh, I know no, maybe no one in chat can answer this one, but if it's illegal to make an artificial intelligence uh, too human, but it is legal to put a human consciousness into a robot body, um, where is it? Uh, is it illegal or not illegal to copy a human consciousness and put it in multiple robot bodies? SS2 is one of my favorite games of all time. I've heard very good things about SS2. Uh, I don't think SS2 is getting a remake, though, is it? I've, I've uh, recently kind of jumped, you know, headfirst into the immersive sim pool lately. I bought, uh, I think it's the 2016 Prey. I meant to, I was actually going to play that for October. Um, but, you know, there's too many games. I'm kind of thinking of maybe swapping out Pathologic 2, which I know some people will not be happy about, but uh, I, I I think, uh, was it Kevbo or Neville? I think Neville said it best when he said, this isn't scary, this is just depressing. <laughs> and I, I would agree with that assessment. It would be illegal. It would be legal, illegal. So I have two illegals, one legal. Interesting. See, this is why strict definitions don't work. I would say that that's a new law. <laughs> that's a new law that you're breaking. Either you're breaking it or there's a law to say that it's illegal. Because if making an artificial intelligence is illegal, why? Why is it illegal? Well, the reason it's illegal is because if you make an artificial intelligence too human, then you have to consider them human. Therefore, they get rights, right? Everyone on board with that? They get rights because they are human. And so therefore, we don't want to dabble with the moral or ethical quandary of an artificial intelligence having rights. We don't want to deal with it. So just make artificial intelligence illegal, okay? So back to the person who's copying their consciousness into new bodies. We have one person, now we have multiple robot bodies with a single human consciousness. Do these new consciousnesses have rights? Do they? How is it different? Why is it different? And also, because you now have multiple people sharing the same consciousness, are we now... Does human consciousness become a currency? I know that's a weird thing, but hear me out. Basically... Anything that has a value associated with it or um, a numerical value, meaning like there can be more than one, right, can therefore have a value associated with it, can therefore be something that uh, has, you know, like a, a scarcity. It really is about scarcity, right? Without getting too political, even people have scarcity. Right? So therefore, they have a value. And that's why we've gone ahead, most of us anyway, have agreed that <laughs> um, 
you know, slavery is, is should be illegal, right? But then you get into this new ethical quandary of someone is copying their consciousness and putting it in multiple robot bodies. So then how do we associate value with those new robot bodies? Are they less valuable than the, um, the original consciousness? And if they are, doesn't that mean that they have less rights? We now have the same problem of having to consider that they have rights. So therefore, I think it should be illegal, not because they are artificial intelligent, but because it's a new rule that you're breaking. It, it, it's a new rule. It, it, it's the same logic as the original law, but it's a new law. Oh, sorry for my leaving so abruptly last week. I did not mean to be a downer. You could have... No, no, no. Neville. I... I, uh, I you you are under no obligation to stay here ever um and and don't feel bad about that at all and i i agree with what you're saying i, I i'm bringing it up because i i thought it was very succinct um and and i also am like i wouldn't say i'm like super enjoying pathologic too i don't i think that's the point <laughs> i think that's like entirely the point of the game but does that mean I want to continue it? I'm sure there are other scary games I could play that people would enjoy more. And one of those games could possibly just be the 2016 Prey, right? So don't worry about that. Clones legit can't have rights and neither can AI. If someone clone you and kill the original, you have no longer rights. That's that's a, exactly the problem, isn't it, Andrino? That's exactly the, the problem. <laughs> like... Okay, here's here's a you know I know I'm not I'm I'm now like completely stopped this uh, the storyline here, but this is an interesting idea, so I have to I have to follow this through. Um, you, the original you, copies your consciousness into a robot body, sells the robot body with your consciousness to uh, someone for the sake of I don't know achieving some goal as an assistant, uh, cheap labor, whatever. You've sold them. You've sold yourself literally to someone else then you die and now yourself you the only version of you that exists is now uh, basically a slave to someone else with no rights they, they got the paperwork so you can't exactly complain and you can't sue yourself either that's a law too that i'm inventing right now but it's a law so it's objective can't sue yourself especially if you're dead that's isn't that that's what they call double jeopardy right I know that's not what that means. Uh, as long as you're doing, a, there's a movie with a dude from Ant Man, Paul Rudd. Oh yeah, no, I remember that movie. Uh, it's is it a movie? I thought it was a series, TV series. Uh, I know which one you're talking about, Andrino. I liked that. It was it was fun. I'd be dead. I legit want no clone to take over. Even if me and my clone were besties, they'd have to get Blade Runnered. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like Blade Runner as a verb. What makes you, you, your thoughts? You both are you. If the copy is perfect, both have the same. Okay, bye. Wait, what? Big is keeping me hostage, guys. I need help. I think you are my polar opposite when it comes to AI. Uh, well, I'm not really expressing in, like an opinion about AI. I'm, I'm speaking about it from an ostensive point of view in within this universe like we're taking the morals of this game's world point and and then extrapolating that to other ideas this game uh the world has stipulated that ai uh to make ai human is illegal um because they don't want to have to deal with the ethical problems of a human ai <clears throat> Uh, he said it. Pathologic and its remake, sequel, reboot, Pathologic 2 are dark, obfuscating, confusing, and grim. Not surprising given that it's Slavic. I think we all be hostage. What is happening? Why? What? Because then it would give clones incentive to kill the original. I call it the Highlander <laughs> paradox. Why would it give them incentive? Oh, I guess if they have less value. But here's the thing. If the clones kill the original, that doesn't ma mean they're value jumps up it's not like the stock market where if you know they kill the original that means that their value jumps up they're still clones they're they're always going to have a surname clone you know clone of it's like a title you know it's like a it's like a caste system but 
now it's there's people and then there's clones of people. You should watch Invincible. I want to watch Invincible. I have it. I haven't watched it yet. If you're going to clone someone, erase the memory of whom is the original. Clones are also illegal. They are now. But, you know, humans, uh, huh, our morality is subject to change whenever it suits us, I've found, historically speaking. People change so much over time. Our experiences shape us. If the clones live different lives, they will become different per people. Yeah, that's true, but almost un irrelevant. Almost. <laughs> I'm sorry, Neville. Like I, I don't, I don't mean to dunk you like that, but uh, it, you're correct. But like, I don't think that that really has much to do with the like objective value of a clone, because people are not going to see it like that. If you had the only clone of someone famous after they die, they would be worth more. That's an interesting point. That is an interesting point. I like that. I like that uh, perspective. If you clones of celebrities, now we're talking. <laughs> let's make this. Let's make this really confusing. Clones of celebrities are they worth more or less than normal people? What a very strange idea. I think clones would be illegal for exactly that reason. I think you need that's that very question there, uh, Faust, is exactly why clones will be forever illegal, maybe. <laughs> maybe, you know, asterisk. Because here's the thing, right? Uh, say you got a Kanye West situation, right? Or an Elon Musk situation. Or, uh, you know, any, let's go with something like very neutral, uh, neutral ground, like say Beyonce, okay? I don't know if anyone's got strong opinions of Beyonce, okay? We're just going with a celebrity with a commodity, aka her voice, which is valuable because there is only one Beyonce, right? Uh, clone Beyonce, perfect clone, not going to get into the sci-fi conversation of if it's perfect or not, who cares, I don't care, right? Two Beyonce's now. Beyonce, original Beyonce, has a problem with this situation because now her voice is less valuable. There are now two people who can exactly perfectly pitch match and, and, and perform as Beyonce. Yeah? So original Beyonce has an, has an issue, a problem with this, is uh, advocating for laws against clones because they don't want to become less valuable. All right. <laughs> they are now. <laughs> if a clone uh, is a perfect clone and has its original memories and it kills the original, then it becomes the original, full stop. Eh, I mean, no. I wish that was the case, Kevbo. And I mean, I would agree to a, a, a certain point, but like that's not how humans work. Bimple after they nerf cloning people in CUD. A philo photocopy of a famous painting is nearly worthless. Well, yeah, true. But that's because it's not a perfect copy of the painting, right? No copy of the paint. This is a, that's a different conversation, Neville. Because the thing is, is a photocopy of a painting is not the same as a clone, a perfect clone of a human being. Because you you make a copy of a painting, and you don't you don't you don't really uh, duplicate much of its. <clears throat> it's it's not even a simulacrum. It's it's literally just a photocopy. Like you don't have the same kind of depth of painting stroke and color and. It, it's not there. It's We don't have the ability. We do not have the technology, okay? We cannot rebuild it. We can't rebuild the Mona Lisa. It's impossible. Um, Avril Lavigne. I'd be selling Gary Coleman's on the black market. Well, there you go. So, yeah, well, now we have a black market of people who are like, hey, I have, a co I have the DNA and consciousness copy, uh, you know, floppy disk for Avril Lavigne. I can uh, sell them to you, you know, for whatever purposes. I'm not asking any questions. And, uh, you know, you do what you want. Uh, ooh, you know, that's a whole ethical can of worms, is it not? 
masterful forgery of a painting is worth only a fraction of the original. An artificial diamond is worthless. A blood diamond is worth millions. Ye yeah, I mean, that kind of like... Either way, it's still... Like, the clone is worthless, right? Artificial diamonds, in theory, are worthless because they are perfect. From what I've heard, but it's all BS because the diamond market is BS. So it's a different conversation. Um, paintings, masterful paintings, even if they are done like 100% perfectly, if you can tell it is a copy of the original painting, then it's still not perfect, right? Can't really do it. I'm sorry. That's why I didn't want to bring up the is it a perfect clone because it doesn't matter. doesn't apply to human sentience like you know even if you make a perfect copy of a painting it's still not going to be you know uh, a thousand years old or whatever 500 years old and it's not going to be made on the same kind of papyrus or whatever they painted on and it's not going to be made with the oils that were available because the freaking olive tree is extinct or whatever it, who cares you can't do it. It's impossible. But you can copy a human being because, you know, eventually the the clone of Avril Lavigne is going to be 24 or whatever. Rick and Morty moment. Just portal gun something from another timeline. It is a value assigned to the origin, the history, not the object. Hashtag. You went and said the F word in chat, Neville. Take pirated games as a good example. Cheap, easy to... Hey, pirated games are a great example, actually. You copy the value of something with a pirated game and not necessarily the original. Actually, that's opening a whole new can of worms. I'm, I'm putting a full stop on this. Somehow this conversation turns sour. I don't know how. Now then, why don't we go on our, way, our own ways if we're done with all business here. The carnival can visit the library. We can take our fabric and Mr. Messenger probably has places to be. Is that an organization producing fabric? Yep. Quality fabric is a rarity. Oh god. Tailors are just as important as syndicates and fixers. Those guys seem to be operating underground. Looks like they're eating people to make silk. What's so special about it? Isn't it the same as an old piece of cloth? No, that's uh, not your ordinary textile, ma'am. You still have a lot to learn. There's a good reason a lot of hot shots in the city are dressed in normal looking attire and not plate armor. This conversation is more fulfilling than the game. and Well, that's because we have contextual anchor points that we can understand what we're talking about, even though we're talking about very strange things. There's no way to know the original. It's the same. <laughs> What's the value of each? Why not one to one? I don't know. Except you just figure out who came up with the idea. Honestly, I just feel old and depressed that different timelines multiverses stuff is now considered Rick and Morty. Uh, Rick and Morty became a bath... Uh, sorry, not a bath... Uh, kitchen sink show it basically has like every sci-fi concept in it and even the concepts it doesn't have um they just included pretty much every like sci-fi concept in it in the form of like criticism towards movies because dan Harmon it seems to hate a lot of very uh, successful or uh popular sci-fi movies putting well thought out arguments in a 200 character chat box is hard true and i know i'm like tearing you up neville uh not really you know like i'm just these are my, this is my perspective uh an exact rick would still be different because he didn't have the idea to do it first i don't know uh, my rick and morty kind of lost me a little bit with the incest baby the incest space baby definitely lost me sorry Kitchen sink show wubba lubba dub dub. Yeah, there it is. Pickle Rick, Szechuan sauce. Hey, if you painted Szechuan sauce on papyrus, do you think you could get an exact duplicate of Mona Lisa? 
Why does the city insist on making literally everything out of living people? I don't know. You've probably seen it from some guests, but those aren't just regular clothes. A high quality fabric can provide just as much protection as an augmentation procedure. Not even money could buy top of the line fabric sometimes. Some can only be earned by joining memberships or workshops or tailors. Some things in this world are entangled in a complex web of interests like fame and stuff, which can't be cleared with money alone. Don't talk, don't talk crap about Naruto. I have did not even mention the ninja, the ninja lad. Why? What? Yo, what? <laughs> did the, the ninja lad was not even brought up? Uh, Dan is a contrarian, it's why I love his work. That's fair. If we have to refer to timeline alternate universe stuff, please at least refer to it as Farnsworth's Paradox Theorems. <laughs> Uh, Futurama is a dad show now so we we can't if it's multiverses are, are a new concept only invented by Rick and Morty <clears throat> sorry <laughs> sorry Futurama that's a dad show you know like dad rock it's it's a dad show we can't uh, no longer valid sorry Naruto is the name of the space baby it's not when did that happen? Did they actually do that? Chat. 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 Did they actually name the incest baby Naruto? It's Norton? Is it Norton or Naruto? There's very two different things. Was it in the same episode? I have to look this up now. Rick and Morty name of in uh, space incest baby. Rick, Rick Dependence Day. This is not a Wikipedia. They keep referring to it as the baby. Giant baby, now named Naruto by Summer. Rick and Morty Wikipedia. No, I want the wiki. I don't want Rick and Morty on Wikipedia. Naruto. Naruto Smith. Jesus Christ. His name is a reference to Naruto the main protagonist of the Naruto series. It is unknown how he is able to survive in space. When did he, when was he named Naruto? He is nicknamed the giant incest baby and later the giant incest monster. When was he named Naruto? Well, kind of glad I bailed on that show to be honest um for context the reason I stopped watching Rick and Morty because of the incest baby was because to me that episode was um either Dan Harmon or the Rick and Morty team uh basically telling its fans to go f themselves because uh, it was the show that added continuity. And I think that a cer at a certain point, um, Rick and Morty, um, like, you know, the creative team 
or Dan Harmon or whatever, wh whoever you want to point the finger at said continuity bad. Continuity bad and we're tired of continuity because we have we have been commissioned for 77 more episodes of this show. And so we're, we're not going to stretch out continuity. We're just going to like do whatever. And, you know, as much as I think there is validity in that, I think you know, telling people they were wrong for enjoying continuity was also wrong. So I, I don't like the incest baby because I think it was not just bad, but a bad episode and also bad sci-fi and also just bad. <laughs> like it was just really, really dumb. And I enjoyed the show because it had moments of like actually creative and intelligent sci-fi concepts injected into it, despite it's like deranged uh style so it has morty's dna and rick gave morty alterations to survive in space it makes sense oh are we explaining why the the giant baby can survive in space rick and morty sucks i said it it was originally just edgelord jokes and recycled sci-fi concepts, and it's just gone downhill from there. There is the occasional sci-fi concept that I really appreciate from Rick and Morty, and it's why I enjoyed it in the first place. Like, for instance, the idea of jumping timelines was really cool when they first did it. Uh, this season is straight fire. Dan was having a moment last season. I might, I might, you know, I might join, jump on it again, and I'm not, I'm certainly not pooping on anyone who is continuing to enjoy the show, unless they throw a tantrum at McDonald's because they don't have Szechuan sauce, then, then you can, uh, yeet right out of my chat, but I don't think anyone here is like that. I'm loving the new season. The incest baby is now part of continuity. That's the humor. Yeah. They bring Naruto up every other... Oh, what? Okay. Wait until Bimple hear about the skater dinos. I don't know. Skater dinos isn't doesn't immediately upset me because it doesn't sound like I don't have to literally say space incest baby. The fact that I have to say space incest baby is part of why I resent the space incest baby. How do you spell that s sauce? I don't know, but there's a Z in there. Sometimes I wonder how my parents would react to watching stuff like that. I don't know. I got my dad to watch Rick and Morty. We watched four seasons together. Fan base is the worst in every case. Take Code Geass or... I don't know. That's that's some anime stuff, Andrino. <laughs> There's no anime around here. <laughs> Promise. Dropping into this crater, check me, bro. I'm starting to feel dazed from all this information. Well, that's enough of that. Why don't we close our eyes for a moment and take, make a wish? And you aren't helping at all. We gotta pray that the prescripts aren't, don't target the library. Bimple sure does love saying space incest, baby. I promise you I don't. I'm saying it to emphasize how much I don't like saying it. I can close my eyes and make a wish. Are you actually playing along? I wished for you to stop bla babbling nonsense. Oh. Anyway, things could get real messy once a prescript points at the library. The index, one of the five fingers, is going to be after us. They'll do anything to keep coming for our asses. As a huge anime fan, 90% of anime sucks. <laughs> Even the good anime. <laughs> Index? That's one of the five giant syndicates that rule over the back streets. They're called as such because they literally have all of the back streets in their hands. It's simple, really. This is a conversation for another time because I, I'm, we're, we're kind of like five or six exhausting conversations deep right now, but I do want to at some point talk about why I do enjoy anime. Not just like certain anime shows, that's fine. But like, basically, the concept of anime. Why? I, I have a high amount of admiration for anime and manga in general. Um, and I, I, I'll talk about it later, but um, unironically do. But there's no anime around here. No, sir. 
I call this a, uh, yeah. Anyway, the five fingers have enough power and influence to rival the wings, so nothing good will come out of opposing them. I still watched Rick and Morty. I agree that it isn't that good, but I did really like the Night Family episode. Didn't see it. Better than Adventure Time, only Woodpecker. What? Wait, what? Neville? It's Szechuan sauce. And it was the straw that broke the camel's back for making sure I hate Rick and Morty. And I, well, Kevbo, see, here's the thing, right? Like, it really is just the fan base because that Szechuan sauce scene is like two seconds long. <laughs> it's like the Pickle Rick thing, right? The Pickle Rick has nothing to do with the Pickle Rick episode. It really, it wasn't a forced meme. It was just a meme. <laughs> It's the, it's the people that regurgitate it that make it so intolerable. Uh, wait, I respect you immensely for that. Seriously, I enjoy action, enjoy some anime, but yeah, at least 9 out of 10 in every anime is trash. Made in Japan, 100%. That red-haired bastard is so cute. What, what are we talking about? Every JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, there are nine, seven, seven deadly sins. I'm sure that some people consider JoJo's trash as well, and I don't blame them, necessarily. It's it's because you're a weeb, we know. Yes. Yes. If uh, if you would say, call, say that someone being called a weeb would mean that they are part of the intolerable uh, subsect of anime fans, what would you call someone who is an intolerable subsect of Rick and Morty fans? Would you call them the part of the Szechuan subsect? I like, I love Rick and Morty, but it's not better than Adventure Time. Manga is the le last real form of fictional expression changed my mind. Oh no, I watched the first two seasons and barely laughed at all. I just meant that the fan base on top of my dislike of the show just drive me away from it screaming. Yeah, same. Are you leaving, bot? All right, bye, bot. Take it easy. Have a good one. They obsess over the orders they call prescripts. For them, prescripts are something they must follow. Yep, prescripts must be carried out, as they say. And we have a subsidiary of the thumb butting in, too. I just hope things don't escalate too much. Never may visit. We simply do our best to receive them. Next cartoon to watch, Rico e Mirato. M Mirato? I, I, I am not saying that good. It's a Rick and Morty-like series, a, lo a lot of novel stuff, like, I don't know, they have a dog that talks. Oh, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hungry, want? Can spin new kind of thread? Excited? Greetings, guess. Greetings. Greetings? Greetings. Okay to eat. Could produce wonderful silk. Will make pretty blue silk. Seems she would taste even worse than the sweepers. True? Does not seem human. Want to eat something tasty now? Tired of disgusting food. Sigh. I'm Angela, director and librarian. May you find your book. Such short greetings. So insincere, too. Disappeared. Alright. Do it, Anakin! Do it! I'm not allowed to say that word here. They'll get your comment blocked, which... Uh, I'm a little bit lost. First two seasons of what? And what comment aren't you allowed to say? The funniest Rick and Morty have ever been is the original Doc and Marty video where Doc Rick has been no, Kevo. No. No. Walter. Put, put the Szechuan sauce away, Walter. I'm just gonna smooth brain this. We're finally playing a new combat here. I'd say the Mr. Nimbus episode was the funniest. I don't remember Mr. Nimbus. Potential. Are we just memeing in chat now? Everyone likes that. <laughs> Shadow band. <laughs> I 
This doesn't seem to be going well. Oh, okay, never mind. That Doc and Marty thing is a real video. It's the precursor. No, I know what it is. I've seen it. <laughs> I'm saying no. No, it's not. That, uh, that thing is, is the progenitor to nothing. <laughs> I hate it. He's Mr. Nimbus, he literally controls the police. I'm glad I was born to live like this. Rick and Morty meets Breaking Bad is just my favorite thing of our timeline. Was that something I did? Did I do that? I'm sorry. Rick and Morty are literally originally based on Doc and Marty from Back to the Future. No, I, I, I would agree with that. I, I think they're like a very deliberate parody of uh, Doc and, and Marty. Doc Brown. Hey, did you all see that uh, Michael J. Fox and uh, Christopher Lloyd reunited at uh, the New York Comic Con? That was a nice moment. That was a feel-good moment. We could all appreciate, maybe? Exhausted? Tired? Want rest? Hungry? Want out? <clears throat> want amputated? Bones melt? Flesh explode? Won't die? Yeah. Sorry ma'am, I'll stop right there. So what do you think will happen next? Looking at how things are going, we're pretty much guaranteed to confront at least one of the fingers. When puppet bimple. Haha. <laughs> Pupper voice funny. Ho ho ho! Here he is! Back again, here at the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> That's it for that. We've already heard the thumb and the index, any one of them. I, I keep feeling like uh, Puppet Bimple needs a name. Do we have a Puppet Bim uh, Bimple name? Doc and Marty is the funniest Rick and Morty have ever been big. You need to accept that into your heart. The best thing about the that, that is Christopher Lloyd is actually actually playing Rick in a commercial. What? Oh, is that like alternate timeline? Rick is just Christopher Lloyd. That makes sense. I, I, I can I can I I get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disparaging it. I I wish Christopher Lloyd as much work as he can get. Love that man. The Back to the Future reboot reboot is coming out. What? Are they? What do you mean reboot? What? I heard sequel, and now they're doing a reboot? Freaking hate that I immediately laughed at Puppet Pimple's voice. <laughs> pimple? Oh, I like Pimple. Pimple. Oh, God. It's actually good. I know that... I know, uh, Neville, it sounds... <laughs> pimple is good. You done it? You done did it, chat. Pimple has a name now. Did, did Pimple, has Pimple been given clothes? Pimple is free! Uh, just the live action Adult Swim bump, but amazing. Plumbus? No. We've already heard the thumb and the index. Any one of them is a, gonna be a huge pain in the ass. Reboot comes out in 2023. Chris and Mike Def are gonna be in it. Oof. Okay, let, uh, let me rephrase. Wish them as much work as they can get. I I was just thinking the other day. I was just thinking how nice it was that Back to the Future was the one franchise that remains untouched. You know? Like, it didn't. It doesn't need a reboot. It doesn't need a sequel. I was like, hmm, you know what? Say what you will about, you know, Back to the Future 2 and 3. Say what you want. It's fine. I enjoy them. I wouldn't say, you know, they're not all equal in value, but it doesn't matter because I enjoy them and it's done and they finished it and it was finished and it was done and it was done and it's finished. It's done. Do you understand what it... And now they brought out the shovel, didn't they? 
I did bring out that shovel. I'm not, hey, I'm not happy, but reboot's gonna be rebooting. Even Gremlins is getting more a reboot. I mean, Gremlins, whatever. I, I don't care. Gremlins was always kind of trash. Listen, don't hate. Before you hate me, chat, for saying that, you you know in your heart that it was always some like shock, right? So if they make some sequel to Gremlins, it no one is hurt. Fin fin finito. You forgot about the point and click sequel. Eh. No, I didn't. Didn't count. Extended universe abolished by J.J. Abrams. The Back to the Future extended universe gone to ashes, annihilated. J.J. Abrams said, no, he is the ender of worlds as, as we know it. Legit the fourth movie and has the actors in it. Wait, is it a reboot or a fourth movie? Don't, okay, children, don't forget to get your mama card to help Little Pimple. The whole trilogy is solid. One just set the bar too damn high. Yes. That's really it. Uh, I think, you know, Back to the Future 1 is as close as one gets to a perfect movie. I get it, Hogwarts. I'm not happy. You forgot about the point-click adventure sequel. It's actually legit. For advanced data science, Gremlins was the fourth... It was a movie with the plushies that turned murderous when exposed to moisture. Or don't feed them something something after midnight, midnight whatever. I mean, Gremlins 2 was schlocky, fun, horror, comedy. Gremlins 2 was literally about how the Gremlins creator thought a sequel would be stupid, and thus he made a purposely stupid movie. Oh, so it's like the Matrix 4 of puppet movies? I could get behind that. The new movie is a reboot. The game... Stop it! <laughs> I was like, what are you? The new movie is a reboot. I'm, my, my, I'm literally getting a headache. Is the new, is, is, is 2023 seeing Back to the Future 4 or a reboot? What is happening? Is Christopher Lloyd okay? Is he alright? Alright, that, that's all that matters to me. Michael J. Fox as well. Although he's, he seems always a little bit not okay, if I'm being honest. Uh, I look forward to it. Oh, of course you do. I'm the one doing all the fighting and bleeding for you. I know this goes without saying, but I am thankful for what you do. Sure you are, ma'am. In any case, well, let's just give it our best shot. The new movie is a game. The sequel is... Oh, that takes a screenshot, actually. Wait, what does this button do? Oh, right! <laughs> Oh no, I'm a pumpkin again. <laughs> pumpkin. I like our I like Bimple lore. Can we get more Bimple lore in here? Oh no, this won't do. But ma'am, we don't have any cash left to offer you. If you're out of money, then you shouldn't have asked for more protection from us, no? But the outside is covered in fog. We don't know what's out there. We'll get killed. We aren't safe here either. Thugs could break in at any moment. Oh, give me a break. Nest life must be too engraved in your heads to get where you stand right now. I thought maybe we could expect better from the household with the highest income around here. <clears throat> so, shall we cut them off? Please do. Wait, cut one off. Cut one off. One what? Cut one what off? It's the Great Bumpkin. Bimple Brown. Marty! Marty, we gotta go back. Marty, your kids, they, they turned into pumpkins, Marty. They're pumpkins. Marty, we gotta go back. What does this button do, Kev? That's right. I have Kevbo Shadow Band on on uh, on a shortcut. Uh, Gremlins one had its moments. If you got them wet, they multiplied. If you fed them after midnight, they turned evil. Gremlins two is hilarious. My buddy in film school said it was mandatory watch in one of his classes for good reasons. So maybe the teacher was wacky. I mean, watch it if you want. I, I'm not... 
like yeah, I think it was always intended to be a little bit shocky. Bimple lore moment. Bumpkin was actually born at a very young age. Pump. Okay, g guys. Pump, uh, Bumpkin is uh, Bimple's attempt to uh, copy his consciousness and put it into the body of a pumpkin. Success or not, who could say? But was it illegal? You said robot body. I say loophole achieved. It was a pumpkin. I'm definitely no professional film, but Gremlins 2 is funny and just weirdly fascinating. Like, who thought Gremlins needed a sequel? And oh my god, yes. FGS is insane. What is FGF? Uh, that is why Bumpkin is a ripe, ripe Bumpkin. I'm assuming you don't didn't know there is a very important movie named Freddy Got... Oh. I ain't visiting Pronton. Uh-huh. It's a Hollywood blockbuster that is a complete mockery of Hollywood blockbusters. Is that what Freddy Got Fingered is? Is that what that... I haven't watched it. Please do. These people have 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 to become accustomed to the rules of the back street soon enough. Hey, consider this a free lesson for you. Ah, my arm! Right? Is that is that where we're going with this? We could take one arm from each. Please have mercy on us. You can't be such heartless people. And did you spare any mercy for us while we struggled in the back streets covered in filth and blood? No, you simply spectated our suffering from the comfort of the nest, did you not? It's rather infuriating now that I think about it. Yang, let us take an eye from them as well. Yes, ma'am. Got your arms first. Content warning on this. We didn't ask for this. You people came into our house all of a sudden and threatened us to pay protection money. It's a very important Canadian movie made by your own local hero, Tom Green. The only green I recognize in Canada is the Red and Green show. I'll have no speak of Canadians that uh, leave us for Hollywood. Talking to you, Brian Lee O'Malley, and you, Justin Bieber, and you, uh, uh, Jim Carrey. Ah, Jim Carrey's okay. And you, Keanu Reeves. Okay, Keanu Reeves is fine. Keanu Reeves... Actually, Keanu Reeves isn't Canadian, isn't he? Isn't he? Keanu Reeves is Hawaiian, isn't he? Seems like a bad movie until you dig into it. It is layered like a moldy pig trowel. We need a separate day in the week for Bimple's podcast show. Eh. If I if I started a podcast, Dimethorn, I think I would become like just too too white and too um I don't know tedious that's you know that's the line you start a podcast and and then like suddenly uh you have to uh take illicit drugs or else you're not interesting enough or you have to uh go and visit random corner stores at 3 p 3 a.m and get into fight with homeless people it's just not a life i i can really live i i, I can't i can't maintain that you know Kebbo. Oh my god, Bimple knows red green. I'm, of course I know red green. That was my that was my I'm skipping school for the first hour, so I have to watch the red green show. Show. Um Imagine someone hiring you to put on a soup the Super Bowl halftime show and you come out with mimes and a vaudeville act. That's that movie in a nutshell. Bimple cast, no. So that's why you have guests. Red Green tried to normalize group therapy for men. Yo, I never thought of it like that. Uh, I forget what what it is. Is the thing they say before they start the meeting like you can never hear it because they're all speaking over each other? Hey, Galen, how you doing? Galen, oh wait, yeah, you you did see my pumpkin. So, have we kept you safe or not? I'm pretty sure we took care of all the bad guys trying to get here. And got your eyes as well. What do we do? How are we going to live now? The nest feels fell so suddenly. What a bunch of crybabies. We're being quite generous as backstreet businesses go. Now, now. 
We'll be going then. Please don't forget today's lesson. If you receive something, you should return that favor accordingly. Imagine if it was the ring protecting this area, not us. I don't want to fight homeless people at 3 a.m. No. Let that let the record show that Bimple is a kind and forgiving Bimple, merciful even. I, I do not want to become the the wrathful god that would start start a podcast. That would just that would be sour Bimple. I don't want to be sour Bimples, you know. Say, not not good for health. Just remember, Bimple. If the women don't fight find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. I, I know what you said, and I'm not saying it correctly for your benefit. <laughs> Dear, the thought alone is terrifying. Oh, well, please leave this house by tomorrow. Jin, confiscate the apartment deed from these people, will you? You'll be visited by much less pleasant fellows next time, so you'd better move out as soon as possible. I'm a man. I can change if I have to, I guess. Is that really what they say? I'm bad, and that's okay. What it was that really sounds like, um, hold on a second. Ring. Villain. Pledge. Uh. Well, why does this have to be difficult to say and to find? Oh, where's the where's the pledge? Okay, I, I'm giving up. Now then, we've collected the protection money and got our fabric. Shall we go back and pay our due credit? Hey, I'm a ten. Oh crap! I finally fa actually forgot that it was Tuesday because of my drunken stupor. You missed a lot, I'm a tan. Including me grinding all those books back. Which is probably a blessing. Uh, how will you get XP if you don't fight the local homeless? Wow. I'll never unlock Royal Guard at this rate. Just said deck builders are not games. Do you agree? First vid. Uh, I mean, I don't want to click on a video. Oh, by the way, Jin, how is your current situation with El Corp's nest? It's fierce. This is the first time in a long while the thumb and the index got in turf war over an area. Everyone must be thinking this is the promised estate or something. The same can be said for us, no? On another note, the rusted chains <clears throat> already proved to be an issue, but we've been colliding with blade lineage uh, more often these days. Did you actually forget to grind them back? No, 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 I, I grinded them pretty much right away. I tried to install that mod, and I don't think it's working, so. Spicy games. Uh, perhaps we should have a friendly conversation with them before the tension overheats. <clears throat> Kerf. Run, dame. What are you? Yo, what's Anubis? Oh no, you done attracted the ire of Egyptian gods. This is not okay. What are you? What's up, fellas? Tanya. So, we really do have everything in this world. Uh, we got human AIs. We've got uh, human consciousness and robot bodies. We've got human intelligent uh, AIs in human robot bodies. And now we have animal bodies with human consciousness. Furries. Sup, fellas? Got some gains with your business? She has the head of a dog, a dog in black coat. Are those kinds of surgeries hip with the kids these days? Captain, that appears to be one of the recently dubbed as Lehur. Lehur de Hu. Oh, she's a wolf, not a dog. Still appears to be. Wow. Wow. Yo, I don't know if that's something you want to say to someone who's like a full two feet taller than you. I mean, like, you know, you can't, don't judge a book by uh, its cover. Yo, I think if this world existed, I would leave the furries alone. They have the kind of money they need to afford surgeries like this, including some pretty hot cybernetics. So, like, 
You know, maybe, maybe don't. Uh, is it a game if it's just cards? Uh, oh no, I've turned into a pumpkin. This tired conversation has turned me into a pumpkin. Oh no, the only thing that will save me and turn me not back into a, a normal human boy is if we move on from this. <laughs> Furry ladies with Russian names. Pe some people distort to this state. I'm gonna be real, deck builders suck. Oh no, you did open a can of worms there, Kevbo. Loves deck builders. I was literally just replaying inscription before the stream. I miss hand is the one who hates deck builders. It's why MMM MM and B what 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 is that? Is that is that just Monster Train? The series did well because they had a new game every other year. <clears throat> what is MMBN? Is that Magic mm, the Gathering? <laughs> I'm <laughs> Furries have the big bucks, speaking from experience. Yeah, the last thing Bimple needs is to become a Discord mod. Right? Right, Andrino? I, I, think, I, think, I think no to Discord still. It's not a surgery, it's a case of controlled distortion. They literally paid pay my rent by this point. Oh, Faust is ousting themselves. Faust, Faust is fausting themselves as a uh, artiste of specific qualities. I have a certain set of qualities and skills that make me a nightmare to people like you. What do you mean people like me? People who hate furries. Oh. I mean, I, mean, I don't hate... Do you want to commission me? <laughs> I have a very specific set of skills that makes a person like me a very hot commodity. Do you want to commission me? I don't know why, but it that was extra funny with the pumpkin head. Just toss roguelite deck builder in a pile of trash, every single one of them. I'm Mega Man Battle Network. <laughs> I live in a hell of acronyms. <laughs> it's a card game, but also an action RPG. Faust, you're a furry artist? I have no shame, only fury. Funny, in it? Oh! Yo, in it! In it! <laughs> In it, <laughs> funny in it. Laugh all you can. Let's see. We have around a hundred, <laughs> or a hundred Kurakomo uh, punks here. You speak as if you can take us all on. Ah, uh, funny head. That's the plan, yeah. Let us teach that pup a lesson. You are about to absolutely get demolished. Ha, weak sauce. I could have crushed you like bugs even before I turned into what I am now. Alright, why don't you gather around and kneel? The dead. Well, they can't be helped. What is it that you want? <clears throat> hey, I have plenty of wants, gal. Want to have a ton of cash in my hands? Oh, that's, that's, that's not a question. Want to live in a nest for once, too. But before any of that, I want to make some music. Hell. Shut your yap already. Whoa, look at their skull go. Flew right out of the park. Home run. Tell us what you demand from us. Oh, uh, well, what I want from you guys. Right, uh, that was the point. First of all, the piece of cloth you're carrying? Give me that. This uh, Nuovo fabric is for the thumb, though. My boss showed interest in that thing. Heard that's a pretty nice cut of cloth. Guess he wants us to suit up before the performance. He must know the consequences of making an enemy of the thumb. The thumb? Eh. Tell them to bring it on. I'ma smash them all. Oh, and take your goons to the library, will you? A library? The building that is rumored to be at the center of this nest? Yep, that thing. So you're here, you're after the wealth this land can bring, after all. Told you, that's not it. I do want to earn some bunk bucks, but music comes first. But for what reason? Beats me, my boss. No, I mean, the orchestrator of our ensemble wants us to get rid of all the... Those noisy syndicates, like the thumb or the index, so that we can make some music in fancy suits, too. And help out the library while we're at it. Help out the library. 
Shush, Cal. Keep your eyes low if you don't want to get dead. You're sending her to the library. You're sending her to death regardless. So, I mean, the, yeah. you guys can take this and head to the li library, like I said. Uh, let me see. Good day. I'm back once again. And with me, I brought a hot take. Overall, New Vegas isn't that good. Yo, bot, I have a question. Do you have any hot takes that, um, like, the subject of it are that something is good? Because a lot of your hot takes are that X thing is bad. But I'm just curious, what, what things do you like that you know that people don't like? I want to see a hill that you die on that uh, raises something up. Just curious. What else do we really have? I'm just saying the ones that pay up front don't ask for four redos and come back for more are the fear furries. I just, I'm an artist artist. I just take comms that pay. I'm just saying the ones that pay up front don't ask for four redos and come back for more are the, are the fear of furries. It's like working for Cubans. I missed a carnival fight. I'm afraid you did. I did work on postal brain damage as my last normal gig. That's a normal gig. I guess that's, hence the uh, quotations there. I miss living with my parents. All right. It's much, much, ha much harder to have a positive hot take, Bimple. I'll give you a hot take that is positive. Uh, Waterworld is good. Here's another hot take. I like Jurassic Park 3. There you go, Galen. That one's for you, buddy. I know, I know, I know you're you're smiling. Don't hide it. Here's another uh, positive hot take. I liked the prequels. It's actually quite easy to have a positive hot take. the the The, the problem is that no one wants to have them because it means uh, dying on a hill that makes you very unpopular. For some reason, people are much more. I don't know, content with tearing down than uh, than hearing that maybe something they enjoyed ripping on was actually good. I don't know. Waterworld is good. Yeah, see? Look at chat go. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> um, there's actually a really interesting cut of Waterworld called, um, I think it's called the Odysseus cut. Let me try it. But uh, it adds quite a lot of uh, extra footage that makes it pretty interesting. Waterworld is amazing, Big. Have you played the DLC for Underrail that is basically just Waterworld plus Fallout? I haven't played Underrail at all. I do want to. Bro, I just climbed a hill and took artillery. <laughs> Yo, we in it. We in it together. You and me, Faust. Let's do it. Yo. <laughs> this is the water hit Waterworld hill. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of positive hot takes. It's, it's just uh, not really worth dying on them anymore. You know? Um, let me think. I'm sure I have more. Oh, I like War of the Worlds with... Uh, what's his name? Tom something. You know the one. Where he sings. <laughs> and it's weird. Uh... Star Wars should be watched in numerical order. I don't know if I'd agree with that. That's a weird one. <clears throat> I hope y'all can warm up soon. What? Oh, you're talking to the people who are cold. Um, hmm. Positive hot takes. I have a lot of them. I have a, like, you know, like the, the Indiana Jones archive where the Covenant goes? That's like my, my archive of hot takes. That's how big it, it goes. Here's another one. I liked Indiana Jones 4. The Crystal Skull. Uh, I think it's a fine or serviceable Indiana Jones. I mean, yeah, it's kind of goofy and camp, but I don't mind. But everything I like is super generic and boring. Well, let's hear it. Let's hear some generic and boring. I want to hear it. The original Mario movie is amazing. <clears throat> it's a Mary, the, the original Mario movie is hitting that... Um, I, I've talked about it before, but it's like a cyclical uh, backswing where um, something that was originally hated becomes liked or its cult following maybe becomes louder than the sum of those who disliked it in the first place. 
and uh, and so the the original Mario movie, especially now, is uh, it's becoming you know the people who are fans of it are, are very vocal, and I don't I don't think that's a problem at all. I think I haven't seen it. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Uh, I p- challenge you to play indie games in early access and not say potential. Everything. Uh, I'm not gonna make coffee on my Ar- Arabic cera- ceramic. Arabic ceramic. Ceramic. I know it's ceramic. <laughs> I liked four because I like Shia LaBeouf and that hot German alien chick. Uh, I, that's a that's I I liked four. I just think it's a fun movie. I don't think that movies really have to be more than just fun. But then then people come at me with J.J. Uh, Abrams' Star Trek, and that's when I lose my mind. <laughs> that's when I become the Hulk. And that's my secret. I always hated J.J. Abrams. Uh, I would have been... It would have been loved if it went with like Dino City or something instead of Mario. Yeah, this is the problem with icons. Uh Uh I'm reading chat. I'm trying chat is going. The only bad thing about that movie was choosing to have it be a Mario movie. I agree with that. I think that there is a lot of things that kind of fall in that category where they could have been really amazing original properties and instead they had to have some kind of name associated with it. I think the 2016 Prey is exactly that, for instance. Math equals good. Wow. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I see what you're saying by generic and boring, but I also think a lot of people would disagree with you there. <laughs> Tell you what, just just to make things interesting, I disagree. Math is bad. It's universally and objectively bad. If we didn't have math, world equals better. There we go. Hill died on. Go on ahead. Uh-huh. Come on, get going already. If you don't use that invitation right now, I'll kindly remove all the bones from your flesh. Let us prepare to go, everyone. Your hands are shaking, Galley. You sure are? You're all right? Are you mad at me by any chance? No, it's nothing. And one more thing. If you run off without the books in your hands, you're also dead to me. Wasabi with that French dude in Japan who likes wasabi is a really good action movie. That was quite intense. Looks like the fingers are fiercely wrestling for the ownership of the nest that L Corp once had reign over. Why would they though? Ever heard of holdouts? When a wing is broken, its nest collapses and gradually turns into a slum akin to the back streets. It becomes a lawless land without an owner to uphold anything. Then a bunch of syndicates come rushing in to occupy the land in advance. What happens next? The vacancy in the wings won't stay open forever. When a new wing rises and gets assigned a nest, the syndicate resells that land to the wing. I legit did not play Prey because I heard about 3D Realms getting shat on. Then I played it and my god, what an amazing game. I do want to play that. Um, Just a quick straw poll in chat. How do you guys feel about me replacing Pathologic 2 with Prey? Um, I'm a 10. I know that you will be upset with me even asking. Maybe? Maybe? I, I don't want to accuse you of that, necessarily. But I... Uh, just l- let me ask and, and l- let me gauge ex- uh, reactions to that. I do kind of want to play Prey, and Pathologic 2 um, is miserable. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, I choose chose my words carefully there. Doom 3 is awesome. There's a positive hot take. Of course the wing can choose to hire fixers or other syndicates to kick out that syndicate with force instead, but that's another story. What will happen to the feathers living in the nest? Those folks? Well, they're on their own. Hire a fixer or get evicted to the back streets or try and join another wing or anything. A nest without its wing is no longer a safe haven for its residents. It's not even as good as the first pathologic, no joke. I, you won't be upset, I'm a 10? Pathologic 2 isn't really a good streaming game, as long as you keep playing Subnautica. Oh yeah, Subnautica's here, here to stay for sure. What is Prey again? Prey is a an immersive sim. It was the new, it was a reboot of an older game that basically it has nothing to do with. <laughs> um, but it's an immersive sim, slightly stealth, slightly 
action horror, um, and it's supposed to be very good. I've been hearing nonstop good things about it forever. It's a huge Pathologic 1 fan. I will say 2 is grueling and more of a fan fix than anything. Prey is overrated. Uh, okay. Well, chat seems overall, uh, positive-ish. Subnautica is better than Terraria. Yo, get the heck out of here, bud. Yo, get, get the heck out of here, bud. Get out of here with that hot take. If you're gonna bring hot takes like that, then Pimple's gonna get really mad. You wouldn't want to see Pimple when he's mad. Have you ever gotten to proofs? There's a, there's a sub conversation happening in chat that I have no, uh, no understanding of. Saw a meme where three stock photos of water and text some Nautica fans gameplay is fire. <laughs> But the, the 60 hours of literally nothing but walking a Pathologic 2 is fine. Oh, on is fine. Ban him! That's typical of the city. If you can't grasp whatever opportunities you find with your own hands, you're bound to fall behind. I wonder what's up with that puppy anyway. That looked like a case of the distortion. Distortion? That's not exactly what I imagined. Indeed, she appears to be highly rational. You call that rational? She seems much more rational than you are, at the very least. Sigh. This was not meant to be. Where the hell did that... Bad word. ...come from? How dare an impudent whelp like her bite at us, superior beings? Uh, have you played Roy A Life Well Lived? It's not on Steam? Let me have a look. Roy A Life Well Lived. I don't think I have played that. What, what is this? Is this Ricky, Ricky and Morty again? This is Rickerson and Mort, Mort, Morta, Morta B again. We're talking about them. They, they, they have, we have broken the sacred law of bringing up the the Mortisons and the and the Rickish, Rickersons only once per stream. Big don't. All right. Calm down, Captain. Let's report this to the thumb right after we take care of this. Yes, let us do that. This uh, this one story cutscene has been at least two hours long. Because I keep uh, getting distracted. It's ridiculous that someone could treat us Kurokumo clan, a thumb subsidiary, with such disrespect. Here, here. Although we're in a bad situation, the books listed on this invitation are tempting offers for sure. It seems that the carnival have ended up turning into books. And this book is related to the nest of Cor El Corp too. Greetings, dear guests. How did you manage to collect the books we need the most? Such is the role of the library. This place excludes the smell of blood. Are you, and you reek of blood as well, dear guests. Oh my, do we? Let's hit up a bathhouse for a warm one once we finish. Good idea, there's nothing like a good bath to blow off some steam on a bad day. Drinks are on me. Are there even any bathhouses or pubs left in Elcorp's nest anyway? That's a fair point. We do have so much to report and take care of, so much to think about. Are you done with your chit chats now? How pushy now then. Shall we head inside? May you find your book in this place. Wait until he, he hears about Naruto too. Are you talking about Boruto? I love that there are some people who didn't believe that Boruto was a real thing because it just sounded like such a fake. It just sounded too fake. You know? I'll be de dead by then though. <laughs> So yeah, I'm a tan. I did, uh, I did grind those pages I needed. I'm afraid I didn't do it off camera, but you missed it, so it's all good. Didn't actually take me all that long. Um, I tried to install that mod. The mod did, did isn't doesn't seem to be working. I try, like I, I did it properly. I had to, I know I had to install the main mod or main, base mod, sorry, but it didn't, it didn't seem to be working properly. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Just pop some DMT. Uh, 
One day we will have VR that injects you with psych psychotics and has 90% realistic graphics and Roy will be a reality. I don't know. That doesn't sound good to me, buddy. Naruto is one of the worst animes. <laughs> really spicy uh, comments in the chat right now. How can... listen. Kevbo, how can that be true when Goblin Slayer is right there? Tell me that. No, hit him. Hit him! Yo! Okay. Ugh. You might be hearing some grinding in the background. Um, someone next door is doing some construction. Um, I hope it's not loud or annoying. Big don't read that. Did you open the modded version of the game? I did open the modded version of the game. I opened quotation marks L-O-R with mods. Um, was that incorrect? Since I've now installed the base mod, do I have to open Library of Ruina as per proper? I know that the base mod installed correctly because when I had Library of Ruina opened, it said like b b Beepos or whatever it is, the, the, you know. I didn't say Goblin Slayer wasn't also bad. Naruto being <laughs> doesn't preclude other anime sucking like me and 90% of anime is, yeah, that's, that's fair. All right. That was me being, uh, I was being flippant. My apologies. Flippant Bimple is, uh, is a, is a force to be reckoned with. Sorry about that. Sorry, everyone. Highly recommend doing some side invitations. One urban plague book, two plague books, three urban plague books. Okay. I'll do that maybe, well, we're at two hours right now, so I might have to call it for Library of Ruina soon. Even Dragon Ball has Gohan, Vegeta, and side characters. Uh, are, you, are you saying that makes Dragon Ball bad? I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. I'm not, that's not an accusation. Did you not get the mod from the Steam Workshop? No, I didn't. I, I got it from Nexus. What are you two talking about? Because Bimple said I did not. What? What happened? What? Never played something new. Is it on Steam? <laughs> something new? Oh my god. I have a new game, and it's going to be a horror game, and uh, I don't really have anything to feature for this feature segment, so I'm uh, I'm going to play. It's a rather short experience, so probably two streams max. Does anyone still think Dragon Ball is good? I think that uh, Dragon Ball has its place in the good category, yes. First of all, just to be pedantic, pushes glasses up to forehead. Here, actually, I have a... here. You said Dragon Ball. Did you mean the Dragon Ball series or Dragon Ball Z? There are two different series, of course. A lot of people would consider Dragon Ball to be a good series, and I would be one of those people. I think Dragon Ball, the original series, is very good. Um, I think Dragon Ball Z has its place in culture. I think that it has problems as well. Um, the main one being, of course, being power creep. Um, but, you know, it's it's got its place. It's, it's a fun little romp. I don't think you'd need to take it seriously, is the thing, you know? Like, I know that the show takes itself seriously, maybe. Like, I know people are going like, Rawr! And then, you know, like, and then, and then episode, and, you know. But, like, you, you, don't, you don't have to be like, oh, the show sucks. <laughs> you could just be like, oh, this, this show's kind of nice. Oh. 
this show is pretty good. I like, Pimple likes this show. This, this is all right. You don't have to take it too seriously now. You could just like, you could just watch something for the sake of the thing and and not have to make your make it your personality now. Don't be don't be pick a Rick and Dragon Ball Z now. It's fine. No, it's just a show. You know. I've got like a cooldown bar, and if I exceed that, then Pimple begins to steal my life force. DBZ is pretty big in Brazil because it was on TV for years. Uh, there's a whole, like, history about DBZ on Brazil, right? There's a history about DBZ in Brazil and specifically Canada. Like, D this is a weird thing. DBZ, like, I can't... DBZ is one of the few things I cannot actually watch the subs for because the Canadian dubs for DBZ are actually really good. And I can't... I can't not hear those voices be those characters now um and yeah dbz was like one of the first anime to be like really heavily circulated in it in both brazil and canada so it's it's a cultural touchstone for a lot of people like you know like naruto but not as much or sorry more so than naruto it's it's a it's a touchstone um for a lot of people when it comes to being exposed to anime and being exposed to you know uh, a different form of storytelling. So whether you like DBZ or not, it's it's kind of important. It's an important show. <laughs> I don't think you need to take Dragon Ball seriously as a series. About the show and fan base who measures power so badly, there is literally Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Ascended form. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing, Kevbo. You, you're proving my point. I don't think I don't think any show or series or story that has something like Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Ascended form is meant to be taken all that seriously. I know that some people do and they're welcome to do so and that's fine, but I won't. Because if I did, I, I think I would lose my remaining brain cell. B last pimple brain cell. Oh no, it's happened. <laughs> it's gone. Uh, don't be pickled Rick in Dragon Ball Z quote of the year. In the hood growing up, every real gangster had the box VHS set. True. Brazilian dubs in general are amazing, even though a part of the country just hate dubbed content. You should see the Brazil dubbed version of Super, Sa Super Mario Bros. movie trailer. <laughs> I will not uh, attempt an impersonation of that for a fear of being uh, insensitive. But hey, um, you know what? We should talk about the Super Mario Bros. movie chat this is boo we do love discourse around here don't we wait that was wrong wasn't it oh boy wrong buttons um scarface hoodlum pulp fiction and the box set of dragon ball z way better than that dude bimple sold his sound in exchange for the pimple voice kurokumo have some good pages can everyone in Brazil speak English. We'll probably get even more guests taking, uh, trying to take over El Corp's nest. You always say that. Is there any real difference? You heard what ha that dog had said? Now we have the thumb, the index, and whatever third party she belongs to. It doesn't sound like a random run-of-the-mill syndicate, seeing how she talked to the members of a, a, a finger with so much confidence. Seems it's not just a major syndicate that have incentive to be involved in a turf war like this. It's smaller. If smaller syndicates are me meddling in so willingly. Brazilian Mario is better than Chris Pratt. That's not a hot take. I'm pretty sure the entire internet agrees that Chris Pratt is the worst choice. But I'm willing to hear some positive hot takes in chat about Chris Pratt being actually the perfect choice for Mario. Any volunteers? Any volunteers for the hill of uh, Chris Pratt is actually the solid choice for Mario? I'm, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. I know Jack Black will do Bowser Justice and Charlie Day is a great Luigi. is just screwed up by not having Chris Mar Charles Marnay. Looking forward to the new Mary movie coming out. It looks good and interesting. Uh, Mimesis 
opting out of the um, hot conversation is exactly the kind of positivity I love to see in this world. Thank you, Mimesis. Your your uh, work is appreciated. Kurokumo uh, are just really good at this stage of the game. Didn't even said that it was a hot take. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's true. That's my bad. There is no, there is the, oh, I don't watch sub stuff. Pinky finger up. That's, culture is dumb. Charles Martinet is still alive. It's an animated movie. Huh. Hey, here's an interesting point. I actually thought, I thought of this one today. Um, this is going to sound, I'm just going to, for, just for a moment, play devil's advocate for exactly like two, two seconds here. Um, who has been the voice of Sonic for like the last forever? Hasn't it always been like exactly one voice actor played the voice of Sonic? Sonic voice actor. This has been a uh, stream of me looking up things. Uh, I'm looking for specifically the English voice actor for Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Ro Roger Craig Smith, is he the guy? Is he the guy? Hey, hey, Chili Docs! Ah! Oh, no! Oh, no! Chili Docs! Is, is he the guy? Roger Craig Smith? So, here's my question. Um, this is gonna sound like De Devil's Advocate, but just bear with me for a moment. How is it that when the Sonic movie came out and Ben Schwartz whoever Ben Schwartz is, was chosen as the cast for Sonic the Hedgehog, that there was an equal ire about Roger Craig Smith. Because there really should have been. Because that was Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah! Chili Dogs! That's the guy. That He is Sonic the Hedgehog. That's him. He is him, and him is he, and they are them to, together forever. And, and, uh... How is it that Ben Schwartz just kind of swooped in as Sonic the Hedgehog and, and the internet didn't lose its mind? Who's this guy? He's not Sonic the Hedgehog. I want my chili dogs! Ah, oh, way too cool! No way! <laughs> Roger is like, he's okay. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you insult my chili dog, Sonic? I cannot believe you right now. I was on Faust. We died on a hill together, buddy. We died on the water world hill together. How dare you? <laughs> I'm surprisingly not interested in watching Terraria modded or vanilla. <laughs> okay. Multiple people have played Sonic in different shows and movies. Sonic is terrible, and only weirdos and furries care about him. But they do care, Kevbo. They do care. They are the clientele for Sonic the Hedgehog. If you do not appease them, they the ire will be felt. And it was felt when the, the original trailer came out. People saw Sonic the Hedgehog, and even people who did not care previously were very vocal. That's not Sonic. That is a weird gremlin. Do not get that Sonic the Hedgehog wet or feed it after midnight. People were vocal. And and so they changed it. Sonic the Hedgehog was changed. That, I mean, props honestly to whatever, is it Paramount, whatever? They, they decided not to die on that gremlin hill. No way! <laughs> Chili Dog Sonic equals literally Steve Urkel. Is it? Do I want to know? Anyway, um, let me let me just get a couple things out there um, in terms of Super Mario movie. Uh, Chris Pratt is bad. Um, they could have done Charles Martinet. Uh, some people have said that uh, Bing Bing Wahoo Mario would have been very exhausting for two hours. My contention is Charles Martinet is a very successful and um, you know seasoned voice actor who does many voices, so he wouldn't have to do necessarily Bing Bing Wahoo. Mario, and in fact, um, Charles Martinet has spoken previously about the fact that he, when he was auditioning for Mario, was going to do standard Brooklyn voice Mario. 
So the idea that he could only do Bing Bing Wahoo, I think, is actually more insulting to Charles Martinet than than just like not hiring as him as Mario, um, and and just like leaving it at that. I hate. I honestly really don't like that the internet is like, yeah, but. Sorry, I have to do this as Sonic because, you know, that the internet is Sonic. Well, you can't... Bing Bing Mario would have been way too much. It would have been no good for two hours straight. And I'm like, Charles Martinet, he's, he's been other things. You know that, right? Like, he is also Wario. Like, he's capable of more than one voice. Seems rather disrespectful. Uh, you know, and then there are other people like... uh. But maybe he didn't want the job. Really? You really think he wouldn't want the job? Who the heck thinks he wouldn't want the job? Seriously. That is some absolute mental gymnastics that people are jumping through. Charles Martinet doesn't want the job as Super Mario. The job he's been playing for the last 20 years. And now there's a movie. And he's gonna be like... Nah. <laughs> what? I hate that. You can just say that they chose Chris Pratt because he's a more notable name. That's fine. I understand that they did that. My contention at this point is fine. You don't want Charles Martinet because people don't necessarily know who Charles Martinet is. Because people don't pay attention and don't know who voices Mario. Fine. Chris Pratt, admittedly a bigger name than Charles Martinet. But you had Danny DeVito right there. He's just, he's right there. He was right there and you didn't take Danny DeVito? <laughs> Danny DeVito, beloved by pretty much everyone? Can you imagine Danny DeVito as Mario? I would, like, for real. <laughs> That would be so good. I would love that. I would love that so much. And yes, I would love that for two hours. Time to go save the princess. Hey, who's this giant turtle here? <laughs> it's ruining my day. Danny DeVito would have been so good. Oh, man. And it, just him and Jack Black in the room together. <laughs> Yo. Yo, that would have been... That would have made my day. I would have been so happy. Do you want to play Feels? Um, I've been asked to play that many times. I could play that. We're almost done. I'm wrapping this up. Hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. I got I got really lost in the in the. You know who would have else been a good Mario? Lewis Black, also a very seasoned voice actor, would have been a really good Mario. I know they don't want necessarily an angry Mario, but come on, come on. Seems it's not just the major syndicates that have incentive to be involved in a turf war like this. If smaller syndicates are meddling in so willingly, well, basically, whatever goods the head honchos take interest in are naturally going to attract the attention of those below them. The thumb or the index probably won't take direct action for now, but their subordinates are nothing to sneeze at. Uh, I have tried to get Big to play it, but I think I failed. No, you didn't fail. I just, uh, I have, there's lots of games. <clears throat> it's going to be tough for us to stop them if we escalate things any further from here. I just hope the other fingers stay out of this. Things won't get out of hand otherwise. I'm fine with it as long as the results benefit us. Oh my god, we did it and we got through that cutscene. That felt like a long time, didn't it? Add Joe Pesci while you're at it? Oh man. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Who's asking? Yo, is this the is this the guy who's been causing all the ruckus? Who's this guy's? Who's been stealing them princesses and stars and stuff? Who is this guy's? <laughs> <laughs>